Hello there and welcome to my second guitar rig tutorial. I'm going to be covering how choruses, phases and flanges work first before we go into guitar rig because obviously you need to understand what's going on and how they work before you can fully get the best out of them. So what I thought I'd do is, is explain how the choruses and flanges and phases work but first before I show you I think it's important that you actually understand the sound principles behind it, the actual theory behind what's going on with the sound waves. So I'm going to go onto the computer now and just show you a few diagrams so you can understand actually what's going on with phases, flanges and choruses. On screen I've got a basic diagram of a sound wave which happens to be a sine wave. Sine waves are the standard form that sound naturally occurs in. Synthesizers can produce square waves and triangle waves and other wave shapes but when we talk about sound waves in nature they're always sine waves which is the standard S shape wave as you can see on the diagram here. Now how can we express what a sound wave is? How do we show what's actually going on? Rather than just saying, oh, it's bassy or it's trebly, we have to find a method of expressing how sound waves are explained. The vertical scale being amplitude or volume and the horizontal scale being time. Sound waves are measured in hertz, measured in cycles per second. So if we're talking bass frequencies, let's take 100 hertz, for example. That's 100 cycles of the wave per second. 50 hertz, that's 50 cycles of the wave per second. When we're talking in thousands, like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 hertz, we actually say one kilohertz, one khz, two kilohertz, three kilohertz, but in general, with people shorten it, you just say k, 2k, 3k, 10k, when we're talking about kilohertz. When it comes to frequencies, bass frequencies are generally anything below 200 hertz. Whereas when you're talking treble and top end frequencies, you're talking about one to two kilohertz, one to two K and above. And obviously anything in between is the middle frequencies or mids for short. The mid can be split into high mid frequencies and low mid frequencies. So for instance, when you see a good mixing desk or EQ unit, there'll be L, M, F, low mid frequencies and there'll be high mid frequencies. So high mid frequencies are like from 500 hertz to 1K, whereas the low mid frequencies are 200 to 500 hertz. The human ear can hear approximately 15 to 20 hertz right up to 18 to 20,000 hertz. Whenever you buy professional audio equipment, such as speakers and microphones, you'll find that they come with a frequency response diagram, which shows you how the unit responds across the whole frequency range, from 10 or 20 hertz right up to 20 or 30k. Let's say I've just bought a microphone and the frequency response graph is the one on the right. As you can see, if I was trying to record a cymbal, it would be no good using this microphone because the treble, the top end, tails off. It would be no good. And likewise, let's say I was trying to record a bass guitar and we had the microphone with this frequency response. You could see that the bass tails off, so it would be no good. But it's pretty good in the middle. It's okay. So it would be all right for guitars. But if you were trying to record anything with a low end and a top end, it wouldn't be any good. The second diagram here shows a flat frequency response, which basically means that it doesn't add treble, mids or bass across the whole frequency range. It's called a flat response, particularly important with things like studio speakers, studio monitors, where you want accurate reproduction of the sound. You don't want to be adding any treble or bass, referred to as a flat response. Flat's important, but it's not essential when recording because ultimately you can always equalize stuff but if a frequency is not there when you record something you're not going to be able to boost it afterwards because it's just not there to be boosted you don't have to have microphones with a flat response because ultimately every microphone gives a different sound and you might want to be boosting the treble or to be boosting the bass or to have no mid-range or to have lots of mid-range. Every microphone gives its own sound and therefore they can be used in different ways however you feel right. If it sounds good to your ears, use it. It's ultimately it's what something sounds like but the frequency response graphs helps us understand the characteristics of the equipment rather than saying it's a bit toppy or there's not enough bass that's why there are frequency response graphs and that explains what's going on in the frequency range.